You know, I make comics. A lot of my inspiration comes from things that people have already made. You can't think of something new because everything's been done before. So I like to look at something else and get a head start on my thinking. So I don't spend too long starting and I can spend more time doing. This is a piece I did. Roy Lichtenstein was a famous painter. He took inspiration from comics. He copied other people's comics and he turned their comic pictures into paintings which sell for millions of pounds. Now I've taken some of his paintings and I've turned them back into comics. Seems fair to me. Jackson Pollock was another famous artist. A painter whose work sells for millions of pounds again. And they called him Jack the Dripper. Jackson Pollock. Have a look at this. He throws paint at a canvas. Splodges and splodges of paint. Doesn't look like much, but he found inspiration by putting one colour on top of another colour. And I find inspiration in his work. I made a book called Nearly Maids. These are some of the Nearly Maids in my book. They look a bit like faces. They are bits of old wood and stone that I would find lying around. I take photographs of them and I draw on top of the photographs. I turn them into something else. This is a quite interesting one. It's an old cigarette rubbish bin. But to me, I thought it looked a bit like an owl's face. So I took a bunch of pictures from different angles. I changed the look of it a bit, I cropped it, and I turned it into a comic strip. The whole book is full of little short stories that I made through being inspired by the visuals. And one of the problems with lockdown is that we've used up all the paper and the shops aren't open. We can't go and buy any more. So I found some cardboard paper, an old cardboard box torn up. And that'll do just as well to make accidents on. I'm going to splot some ink out of a bottle on the paper or the cardboard. You don't have anything. And I've got a stick, which I'm going to use to just shove the ink around. I'm not looking really even at that. I'm looking at my phone. I can't see anything in the middle of the screen. So we're just making shapes and patterns and accidents and we're going to see if it suggests anything to us once we've made it. Now I'm moving ink around, I love moving ink around. It's sloppy and mucky and I get it on my arms and my feet and I'm walking in the house. And I get told off, but that's okay because I can always blame it on the cat. So I made a black splodge. stick into it, off to the side, in and out the ink, just to give little splotches of ink all over the place, little bits of texture, see what sort of shapes it makes. I don't really know what that makes. Dark black splodge on brown cardboard. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to have a little think about it. Turn it maybe, turn it around, see if I can find anything this way. Looks like it could be somebody or something running. And here, mm, that doesn't remind me of anything. This way around. Could be a storm at sea, I suppose. And back to the original way. Mm, again, could be a human being. Could be, could be a creature of some sort. I'm going to let the ink dry. I'm going to have a little look at it. What I do. So I stand this piece of cardboard up somewhere in my room and I just walk past it three or four times during the next hour just to see if it rings any bells or makes any suggestions to me. I keep looking at this black blobs on brown cardboard. I'm looking for inspiration still. There could be all sorts of things. I think, I'm going to turn it this way around because I think I can see the shapes of a little character in here somewhere. I'm going to use some black and white pens. I'm going to draw over the black ink and see if we can get something out of him. This here this looks very much like an ear, which would mean the eye around here maybe. Teeth. It looks like a little mouth. There's a little gap here. Maybe some teeth. The top edge of the mouth and some little teeth. It was at this point that my phone stopped recording sound for some reason. So I'm going to fast forward through it now and I'll talk over the top of my video of my video. So I drew the nose and the face and eyes. Drawing the black muds on the paper, 
using these white paint pens which show up really well over black paint. Trying to decide what the shapes that I've already got down there, which has happened by accident, would suggest it might look like to me. Drawing in details here and details there, jumping all over the place. Trying to figure out how to make one line join up with another line and look like something solid. Very quickly, scribble, 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 drawing hair, faces, eyes, and on as we go. And that got to the end. I'll do a film in a little bit more of the finished version. Lots more white lines and black lines scribbled over the same little character. I made a little puck, which is a character who lived on Pook's Hill in Barwash Village from old English folklore. An imp or a sprite. If you're nice to him, leave him a glass of milk at night. He comes and does some of the work for you in the house. So you don't have to do the chores like the washing up or mending old shirts. But if you make him upset or you're not very kind to him, he drinks all your beer. So that could be Pucker Poots Hill. So I've made these lines here, I've joined them up. The splats that we had there and there made a foot. Nice hairy legs, big feet on the hill, big red nose. That's just taking inspiration from the splats on the paper, taking inspiration from an old folk story, Pucker Poots Hill, scribbling around, see what happens. If you try making your own nearly maids, you can see what happens with your pictures. Thanks for watching.